Welcome back to Travels of Preston. If this is your first time stopping by, salute to you. You can catch me every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time right here on my channel. Don't forget to open the description box and check out my other links to the social media platforms. Also, hit the like button and subscribe to become part of the travel family. Leave a comment and tell me what you think about today's episode. Check out my previous episodes and let me know what you think about them too. Today is one of my favorite topics to talk about. That is traveling with my family. I want to give you some advice about traveling with kids that I found very helpful over the years. With that being said, let's go. All right, so the first thing I like to always do first is booking tickets because I need to see how much it gonna cost me to get from point A to point B and back, all right? So as you know, I'm a family of seven, so tickets are expensive. I mean, I don't even care if you get it 10 years early. It's, it's always expensive. So I always try to look at the cost. I always, so let's say, for example, if it's um, a flight, I look at every single airline. I don't care what's going on because I, I don't have a, a preference. Whoever's going to give me the cheapest and safest, whoever got a good track record, I will, you know, caveat with that. I don't want to just say I'm out here just, you know, winging it, you know, trying to go rogue with it. No, and I don't do all that. So I definitely look at cost, um, the track record and stuff like that of the airlines. Uh, also, you definitely want to get it early. You definitely got to get it early because I, I don't know about y'all, but I want to sit next to my family. So I don't want to be sitting there like, hey, I'm in row E, you in row F. Okay, you over there in row, you know, Delta. You back in the way in the back on the... Nah, man, I ain't trying to do all that. But I like to, you know, keep my um, head on a swivel. I can see all my family. We all together. Just in case any craziness go down, you know, dad got them, you know. Um, so that's just when it comes to, like, flights and stuff, right? So then we have the road trip because I'm the king of road trips. I'll take a road trip in a minute. I have everybody in the Lambo, AKA minivan, and hey, we just hitting the road again. So with that being said, I gotta see how much it's gonna cost for gas. So that means you have to know your um, your gas tank, how many fill-ups it's gonna take to get there. You also gotta know how much gas it's gonna take for you to get around. All that, you know, you gotta take in, um, in consideration. A lot of people don't. Uh, they only think about the gas, you know, get there and back. Oh, it's only gonna be two stops or two fill-ups. Yeah, but what about when you're driving around the city? People don't think about that. So also, you want to talk about some road snacks. Shout out to Big Job. I know you had a little skit about that, but yeah. Um, you definitely want to um, know about the snacks. And like I said, with a family of seven, people are always hungry. Hunger never goes away. Matter of fact, I'm going to start saying hunger is probably one of the, you know, is my eighth uh, family member because that person is always in my car. I'd be like, man, who are you beating you? So you definitely want to have that on deck. My wife is the queen of that. She always getting snacks. She always going to make sure that, you know, that the travel family, you know, we stay stocked up on juice, you know, water or chips or something like that. She always get our favorite snacks. Uh, she always go to, say, a place like a wholesale place, like a Costco or, um, you know, anything and anything that's like that. Because I don't know all the you know places like that, whatever, but. Literally, it's just cheaper to get a wholesale or something like that. So we normally go that route. The next thing I look at is lodging slash accommodations. Once again, the first thing is cost because I'm not sitting up in there. No, you know, we ain't sitting up at, at the at the Hilton, you know, or the Ritz Carlton or something. No, we're going to have to scale it back a little bit. You know, we I like to look for them places that I have to, you know, keep the light on for, you know, Motel 6. Now I'm talking about. So. Actually, I'm lying. I, I probably don't stay in Motel 6. But that's the the, the round, you know, little, 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 you know, three-star, you know, hotel. If I stay in a hotel, um, yeah, but you got to look at the policies because you might not be able to get, like, say, for me, I can't, I always got to get two rooms, always. Always got to get two rooms, which pisses me off. And then I try to get um, adjoining rooms. If, if I can't get adjoining rooms, then I get them across the hall so I can at least go from one door to the next. And then uh, we kind of do it like that or whatever. Um, so that's on the hotel side of it. 
Airbnb, obviously, I would you know pick a uh, Airbnb that can house all of us in you know one central location. So they sort of be like uh, just you know an apartment, townhome, house, whatever the case may be, and make sure it has enough beds, uh, put a privacy for everybody because we are a mixed family as far as you know men and women. Um, if I don't go that route, I try to do the apartment style hotel, which is similar to like an Airbnb. I stayed in one or two of those. I remember I, I stayed in one in uh, Belgium. Uh, where was that? Brussels. I went to Brussels and I had like an apartment style hotel and it was lovely. It had like three or four bedrooms, um, huge kitchen, uh, living room, dining room, balcony. It was beautiful. More than enough space for the whole family. And we really enjoyed that because like I said, we got to stick all in one room and play games and you know eat dinner together. We had a kitchen table. So it was almost like being at home. So that really um, opened my eyes to apartment style hotels. So next is planning activities. So kids get bored easily. We all know these things. Kids be like, man, hey, when we getting back to the room, you know, I'm gonna try to get on this game, boy. I'm gonna try to, you know, do this or that. Hey, I wanna take a nap. I wanna get off my feet. That's when I be like, uh, uh, shut up. We out here, you know, we, we doing work. We out here trying to see everything, you know, trying to tell the kids like, hey, when I was little, I dreamed of these places. And now that I'm older, I'm able to go to these places and take you with me. You know, I want them to enjoy. So you got to make it fun. Try to do your research and see uh, kid-friendly places. Um, some of the places that I like to take my kids to the park. I mean, everybody loves the park just to see the view, just people watch and stuff like that. Um, you got theme parks. Um, depending on what city you go to, there might be one in this actual city or maybe like just a uh, surrounding city. So you wanna check that out. Um, you got museums and some of the museums are free, you know, cause I like to talk about free stuff. I love that free, they're free 99. So when it comes to free, that's the first thing, that's my first option I'm looking at. And like I said, that goes back to the park. That goes back to certain museums. Um, you got hiking, that's, man, that's free. Uh, you got free walking tours. So you know what I'm saying? Like you can just meet up at a location and follow the guide and you just hit, hit all these little spots for free. Um, what's not free is something more or less like, which will be easier to, to get around with multiple people is the hop on hop off uh, tour buses. I love those because it's cheaper than catching cabs and they actually drop you off at pretty much all the locations that you want to be at anyway. And then you can just take your time getting back on the bus, you know, uh, cause I guess larger cities, they come around maybe every 20 minutes to every 30 minutes. So you're able to, hey, we can miss the next two or three buses and then you just catch when you have you ready. Now they do have a time limit as far as like a schedule to keep where they say, hey, you know, we start at say seven o'clock in the morning and the last bus run to like eight or six or whatever. So you have to be uh, mindful of that. But other than that, you're pretty flexible on that. Okay, so next thing I like to talk about is safety tips. Oh man, I cannot stress this enough because it's always safety first. You know, it's one thing when I'm by myself, I live a little bit, you know, dangerous. But when I've got my family, hey, that's the most important thing is getting them back to the room or back to, you know, home safely. So we always got to talk about do's and don'ts. We always bring that up. And most of the do's and don'ts don't change, whether we at home in America or we abroad somewhere or we just, you know, in another state or something like that. I don't care. We talk about safety first. I made sure everybody got their cell phone charged. I make sure that everybody got everybody's number, obviously. Uh, make sure people got money on them just in case we get separated. And, it, and if you are at another location, you want to make sure the kids have the hotel information. Just like a lot of people make sure that their kids know their home address and they you know home phone numbers and stuff like that. You want to make sure they know how to get back to the hotel, or at least know which hotel they're staying at, which room, who the um, the hotel's booked through, not really booked through, but who's it booked under, whether it be mom or dad or both or whatever, because you just never know. Um, Cause stuff happens fast around here, man. You know, it's just, it's not the same world that, uh, you know, I guess my 80s, 70s, 60s, you know, you know, all of us, you know, we didn't, you know, it was a little, that's a little bit safer, as they say. Oh, one, one thing I think we don't talk about, is having a plan just in case you are separated. You know, I like to, you know, the army's taught me battle drills. So, you know, I don't want to say you want to quiz them like, hey, we're going to war tomorrow, but it's, it is very important to say, hey, 
you know, if we get separated, who do you go find? Oh, I go find a policeman or I go find a police station, you know, or I go into a, a local shop, you know, you do stuff like that. You know, Hey, if we get separated, you're not, Hey, I'm about to just say, Hey, I'm about to just sit where I'm at. No, I need you to go and get your safety first, which will be normally like a store where they have a phone where they can contact the police and stuff like that. And that comes back to my other safety video that I did that, you know, you want to make sure, you know, the consulate know where you at. So all that stuff is very important. Very, very important. Um, oh, and also if you, um, you know, if, if you're traveling with kids, my wife will actually point this out to me the other day. I mean, we never really did it, but it's a good idea. If you have a date night, sometimes, you know, you and your significant other might want to have date night with the, um, you know, even if you're abroad, care of family members. So that way, one that's free because I think they do have like on the spot type of uh, people that watch kids and stuff like that. I wouldn't trust it. But, you know, but if you do think you might want to do that, you know, I think a good thing would be to bring a family friend or a family member. Um, I guess how they get there is on you and whether or not you're going to pay for all that or they're going to have to, you know, kick in their own, you know, ducats, as they say. But I mean, I hope I didn't speak too fast. I'll, and like I said, if, if you have any like questions, you know, please leave a comment below and I'll definitely write back and, you know, get back at you till next time. Peace.